Hi guys, welcome back. This time we're gonna paint a couple of MG doors. Now, I've only done one for you to look at because they're both the same anyway. So, start to finish job. This one's in more detail, so I've split the video up into a couple of bits. Um, it might be three or four pieces, I'm not quite sure yet, but enjoy anyway. Welcome to How To With Kel, where we teach you how to save time and money by doing it yourself. Remember, if I can do it, so can you. Okay, new project. This is an MG door. This is from about a 1957-58 MG. And I've been given this door in a ready to paint condition. Um, the supplier said to me, all you've got to do is whack a couple of coats of paint on it and you'll be good. All right, so let's have a little bit of a look here and see what we've got. So, as we go around this, you'll quickly see there are some major, major blemishes in this. There's one just here. It doesn't take much to realize that there are some serious problems with this and it's gonna need considerable filling and repair work to get this up to scratch because it's nowhere near ready to be painted. Not even close. So we'll just whip along here and just in here you will see, now that there, is obviously not very flat so if I was to paint this it would end up as a disaster and there are lots of little parts wrong with this and there's there's fill all over the place there's a this edge up here is sharp in here so yeah she's she's in quite bad condition and this here you can hear you can hear how rough that is so that's been sanded with some kind of a machine and you can actually see all the grind marks in there so this little guy is going to need a considerable amount of work to get it ready to go and I'll take you through it so after having a bit of a look around I found this now this is a classic example of an area not being prepped properly before fillers applied and this has obviously got dirt or some kind of rubbish underneath it which has caused the filler not to stick so what you need to do is to break it out like this and I've used the tip of a rat tail or round file to really score that surface up and put some deep grooves in it to give it something that it will really key into and this is the piece of filler that I broke out and you can obviously see there's so much junk on this that was never ever ever going to stick and this is what it should look like when it's repaired what I'm going to do is get it as flat as I can now because it's in a really bad condition at the moment I just want to get it flat or as flat as I can and then I'm going to paint it with two pack undercoat and then I'm going to sand it back with 600 grit paper or thereabouts and reflect it in the light. So this is obviously a bit later in the job. I just wanted to do this to give you an idea. So that dull surface looks like this when you reflect the light on it. You can see any imperfections in the door. All you need to do is to make sure that the light is on the opposite side to where you're standing. So this is gonna get noisy very quickly because the compressor will kick in. Okay, the object here is to keep this machine flat. Keep it moving and that will give you an idea of how much work you've done. And you don't need a lot of pressure. You can see there's just my thumb on top of this. And it's a fairly easy process, just keep it flat. Okay, this edge along here is very, very rough. There's a lot of filler around the edge of here. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do is just knock it off with this. The actual metal surface is quite good, so we don't have to do anything with that. And this is, once again, this is 120 grit paper. So all I'm trying to do is just knock it off. And that's good. So there are a few spots in here that need to be looked at. There's one just here, which is quite bad. And there's quite a few pinholes in this area here. Just down here too. So what I'm actually trying to do is to take off as much of the filler as I can to find out exactly what is left. And 
um, in most cases, you can actually take off enough filler so that you actually don't have to do any more filling at all. Okay, as you can see by what is left, there was way too much filler on there. So all of this here is gone. All of this here is completely gone. So there was no need at all to have all that filler on there. That would have just created a line. All of this section here, I'll just, I'll just sand enough to key the paint and then I'll undercoat it with two pack undercoat and we'll have a look and see what we've got left because there is basically nothing wrong with all of this this is fine so that's that section done so all that remains now is to paint it and give it a rub back and see what it looks like so we'll go and have a look at the other side now and see what that brings us okay this is all the same processes that we did on the other side just try and keep the center of the pan as much as you can on the work I did use the edge of it for a second there, it's not so important now because we are very early in the job. Just go over the whole surface, just make sure everything's fine, finish all your edges like I'm doing here, and you should be good. And that's it guys. So what we'll do now is we will paint that. Okay, we're gonna cover these first, these little blemishes here. This is where some welding was done inside the door for the support panels. Um, just clean it up guys, blow it off, and give it a coat of paint. It's the same principle that we always use, just remember to clean it, that's all. Get all the dust off, clean it all out, make it really, really, really clean. And then nice even coat. And that's basically it. Let that tack off for 15 minutes or so. Come in, blow it off again like we're doing here and then just give it another coat and that should be fine for the first section. Coat number two. So just try and put it on nice and even. Try not to get too much build up. And you should be good to go. It's a fairly easy process. I mean, this is only undercoat. You're gonna rub this down with 600 grit paper and more than likely have to paint it again. So there's no major drama at this stage. This is just getting coverage on it so you can see what you've got. Now we're going to wax and grease this bit. Make sure everything is fine, it's nice and clean. If you touch it like this, just make sure that you clean it again to get any grease from your fingers because you will end up with a reaction. This is just me being impatient. Um, you can wait for this stuff to dry. It takes about two or three minutes to actually completely dry. I was just impatient. And once again, we'll put two coats on this, edges first, and just lay it on nice and even, or as even as you can get it. You know, this is not a major drama if you don't get this perfect, because you are gonna rub this back. Now, this is the surface that we would have reflected into the light once it was dry and sanded and that will tell us any story that we need about any problems there might be in the door. If there's any blemishes in there, you'll see them now. Any pinholes, you will definitely see them. As soon as it's rubbed, they will really show up. This is a way to get the result that you need. Okay, that's the end of part one. Part two is coming soon. All I've got to do is finish the editing on that and I'll bring it to you as soon as I possibly can. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. All the good stuff. See you next time.